where can you bite into New Mexico's state cookie, the Visco Cheeto? It's anise seed, cinnamon, mm. brandy. While chatting up artists from around the world. How about meandering through a fantasy realm at Meow Wolf? There's these like secret passageways, like these wormholes. Santa Fe, New Mexico is a haven for culture, art, and creativity. But what are some of the top places where you can experience this? From Canyon Road's inspiring galleries to the annual International Folk Art Market, centuries-old weaving traditions in Chimayo, and the mind-bending experience at Meow Wolf. We're diving into art attractions in and around Santa Fe, New Mexico, on this episode of the Travels with Darley podcast. So if you like learning about new places to travel or just want an escape, please subscribe. Santa Fe, New Mexico is well known for its art galleries on famous Canyon Road and beyond. But artists don't just live in Santa Fe. They travel here to showcase their work at yearly fairs, markets, and festivals. Every year in July, travelers can meet artists from around the world at the International Folk Art Market, where I'm traveling to discover not just art, but food and history. Director of Community Engagement, Adrian Murray, meets me to take a walk through the market. So this year we've invited 164 artists from 49 different countries. And that doesn't even include the uh, six American artists that are nominated by our Museum Hill Partner Institutions. What does this do for the different artists that are able to come and exhibit and also sell? For some of them, it's life-changing. It is an opportunity for some in one weekend to make as much as they would make in their home countries in an entire year. Wow. And so they go back to their home communities and build schools or dig wells or you know just lift up entire communities, which is like why we love to do it. Well, I can't wait to take a look around and then I have to go try a New Mexico cookie. Yes, <laughs> please do. <laughs> I'm meeting with artists to fully understand the diversity of this marketplace. Some have traveled from as far away as India and New Zealand, like Mita Mastani from New Delhi, India. She uses a 100-year-old technique of printing onto fabrics using hand-carved wooden blocks. Playful prints of owls, wine glasses, coffee mugs, leaves, and even feet are printed on shirts, towels, stationery, and more. What inspires some of your art? The playfulness of folk art, the playfulness of the folk uh, idiom, the tradition, that's what inspires me a lot. And I love the techniques. I love the constraints of the technique. That's so funny because I've often read that when you put constraints on a project, you actually do it better. Yes, exactly, because I work with natural colors, and that means I have a very limited palette. There. And especially because I work in large quantities, I like to make the things that I make very uh, reasonable so that more people have access to them, so that there's more employment generated for the people who are making them. It's a long and complicated process. Well, it's beautiful in the end, and you know, things that are beautiful and wonderful take time. Absolutely. Fernando Lorenzo's vibrant booth is decorated with bold and neon painted boards, reflecting the culture and traditions of his family's remote village in Mexico. Fernando, these are so colorful. They're all hand painted, made by different members of my family. We're six different artists and we've been painting for three generations today. Is this a type of style that would be indicative to your area of Mexico? Yeah, so my family is from the state of Guerrero. Our state is like filled with little villages and my village is called Shalitla. It's a very traditional village. All of our imagery is traditional dances, costumes, things having to do with our festivals um, in our village. This is a tradition that my grandfather b brought to us and that we've carried for three generations today. From Mexico to New Zealand, if you want to learn about global cultures, this is a one-stop destination. Carly Brown uses feathers to adorn textiles, cloaks, and dresses. And you're from New Zealand, your background is Maori? Am I pronouncing that right, Maori? Um, that is a really good pronunciation. Um, we say Maori. It actually depends where you're from, like what some people pronounce. 
pronounce it differently, but Māori is the general consensus. So. Carly, why the feathers? What's the significance? The significance of feathers is that we believe in our culture that feathers are the messengers between the physical and the spiritual world. So birds are very important in our culture. Some of the native birds are extinct now. Um, that's what we would have traditionally used. Nowadays we go to the rooster, the turkey, um, sometimes goose, domesticated birds. In addition to lots of art, you can meet other local entrepreneurs at the many food venues on site at IFAM. There was one in particular that caught my eye and definitely captured my taste buds. <laughs> so this is the bizcochito. It's the official state cookie of mm. New Mexico since 1989. And they actually even passed a bill to make it official. What is in there? Is that anise? It's anise seed, cinnamon, mm. brandy. These pale, golden shortbread cookies are popular during the holidays in New Mexico. What's the origin story, though? These date back much older than 1989. Yes, yes. So when the Spaniards came to New Mexico, they actually um, brought with them what was called a mantecado. This was way back in the 1600s. So if you look at a lot of different Latin American or Hispanic cultures, there is a cookie very similar to this, but New Mexico kind of made it its own because you know, recipes have been handed down and generation to generation. So, and in fact, if you go to southern New Mexico, they don't even call them a bizcochito, they call them a bizcocho. Um, so there's a little fight going on between northern New Mexico and southern New Mexico about the proper way to say it. <laughs> So bizcochito? Bizcochito. Bizcochito. I like the bizcochito. Thank you. I think I Thank need you. to try all of these. Blue okay. corn, lemon, red chili, chocolate chip, traditional green chili pecan. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be here for a bit. Right. <laughs> if you want to see what's here year round, step inside the wonderland that is the Museum of International Folk Art. The Museum of International Folk Art is home to over 160,000 works. So there are definitely lots of visuals here to fuel your creativity. There are objects from over 100 countries representing cultures from around the world. Polish figurative wood carving, Mexican folk pottery, and Turkish ceramics are just a few of the colorful works featured in this museum. Museum quality art can be found just down the road along Canyon Road in Santa Fe. I'm at the start of Canyon Road here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And if you love art, this is the place to come. You can spend several hours or more exploring the galleries that line this road. And we're just at the beginning. With over 100 galleries showcasing everything from contemporary art to Pueblo pottery, you can definitely spend a day working your way through this half-mile road lined with adobe architecture. I've decided to stop by Marin Studio and Gallery, where Patricia Marin proves that you're never too old to discover and pursue your passion. I am in my 60s and I start doing this, and I, I sure and I believe whatever you want to do in your life is possible in any age. If you want something, just go and get it. But you had to work so hard. It's so funny because the more I travel and meet people, the more I hear that sentiment all over the world, and especially from people that are very wise. They say, you know, go after what you want. Life is so short. Mm -hmm. So it's really nice to see that you're doing that here on Canyon Road in Santa Fe. Yeah, thank you. Patricia Marin paints on wild bird feathers, which she frames and puts onto hats, makes into jewelry, and more. But how did you decide to start painting on feathers? Because I don't know if I've really seen that before. And I've seen a lot of art around. So that started when I was very little. My mom took me to the plaza. And I walk around San Jose because I'm from Costa Rica. And I saw some people painting small single feathers. You know, ravens, they bring messages to, to people. That's the belief, you know. And I believe in that because that was my message. That's the time when I need to start doing what is prepared for me, you know, for waiting for me for years, years ago when I was a, a, a little girl. A message from a raven in yes. Santa Fe. The feather drops and now we have this beautiful gallery. I'm excited to see how I can help you <laughs> because you know I have really amazing art skills. Patricia hands me a brush and I stand at a canvas and attempt to paint yellow flowers onto a series of feathers in the shape of a fan. I love that we're painting with yellow because yellow is my favorite color, Patricia. I know. <laughs> Uh, not really take care about detail when you put the painting. Just put the painting, 
Hey, well, it's easy when artists say that, but you know, <laughs> I'm rolling with it. <laughs> you are very talented, really. Oh, oh. Yeah, I sure not. <laughs> She's giving me a clean slate. And now this is a feather <laughs> for you. Patricia places an easel with a white canvas with a black and brown feather in front of me. And I attempt to paint a sunset starting with a white base. Patricia, this is actually very challenging Yes, for an artist to paint in, on this medium. I try to do something that's not really, really easy. So you like an extra challenge. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why you started to become an artist. It's pretty amazing. It is. Yeah. And my crew back there keeps laughing at me. <laughs> So I find that sometimes it takes a bit of time for us all to realize our true talents and calling in life. And mine definitely does not lie in painting. Another more unusual find located within Santa Fe County is a destination that just may blow your mind. Get your creative juices flowing at Meow Wolf, which has tens of thousands of square feet of art installations that travelers can explore. Vince Kedlubeck, who helped start Meow Wolf, takes me on an insider's tour of the House of Eternal Return. The concept is that there's this family that lives in this house and some event has occurred that broke time and space. And so there's these like secret passageways, like these wormholes that then lead people into these other dimensions. And so we really wanted to create the sense that like you're going from one dimension to another with all of these different spaces. So we are time traveling today. Yeah. Time traveling through spaces where artists use video, audio, painting, writing, and other mediums to tell a sort of bizarre and very creative story. Now we're in TV land. Another <laughs> yeah. time and space warfare. Totally. I mean like all of these spaces, it's it's art first. You know, we want the we really want to support what the art is and then the story is kind of secondary in a lot of ways. We just want to create spaces that people get to like lose their mind in and escape reality for a little bit, you know? Yeah, it's like a amazing, like here I feel like I'm in Alice in Wonderland. Yes. Because I have like these trees yeah. and the mushrooms. Yep. Yeah, mushrooms and... that you can play with. They, yeah. they make different sounds, they play music. Um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty wild and a lot of fun. I mean, when's the last time you found yourself crawling out of a dryer? or walking through a forest of neon trees. We want to create spaces that feel alive and feel different than what anyone's ever used to, to experiencing before. We really like the idea of supporting a, a collaborative uh, sort of spirit and letting artists just like, you know, do whatever they want to do, create whatever they want to create. Immersive art at its best for big kids and small. Heading north out of Santa Fe, you can take a day trip to enjoy art at a pilgrimage site for many Catholics. Chamayo, home to El Santuario de Chamayo, a chapel whose dirt floor is believed to have healing powers. While religion is a major reason for many people to visit this small community in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, folk art and cuisine are also a big draw. For generations, the Ortega family has been weaving in Chamayo. Today's descendants continue a tradition that started back in the 1700s when a young Gabriel Ortega settled in what today is Chamayo. At the time, the area was a territory of New Spain, and Ortega and others like him wove their own clothing, rugs, and blankets out of necessity, creating them out of wool from sheep brought over by the Spanish. Today, Robert Ortega is the eighth generation of the Ortega family to continue the tradition of weaving in Chamayo. And he shares more about those weaving traditions. These weavings up here are very representative of traditional Chamayo weaving, where you have the dominant background colors and then the geometric designs, the striped borders. And then you notice they all have a, a fringed edge, which you, you'll never find a fringed edge on, a, on an Navajo weaving because of the way the looms are set up. The designs are kind of determined by who taught the person how to weave. Uh, you pretty much create it on the loom. You don't follow a pattern. So there's never two really exactly alike. Color combinations and the pattern are literally what, what the weaver decides they're going to do that day. I look at these and I didn't realize how personal 
each one is. Yeah. It's very personal, personal to you and personal to your family. Right. Because I can look at any weaving in the store. Out of 20 weavers, I can look at it just out of a glance. I know who made it by looking at them. It's almost like an insider secret here yeah. in Chimayo. Yeah. <laughs> the Ortegas have had a store in this location since the early 20th century. Downstairs, Robert shows me some of what they've held on to over the years. This portion of the building is the original store from 1900. And these weavings are a couple of examples of the earliest weavings that we still have. This one dates back to probably the mid-1700s. Wow. And this one was one that my father wove sh shortly before he passed away to kind of replicate the pattern. And this one shows what the weaving was like for the, for the colonists when they set, settled this area because they had to weave for their own usage. It wasn't a commercial product. This is the hmm. baby mattress. Wow. So how old would this be? This one's probably from about 1850. So it had to be a pretty tough baby because I don't think it's very soft. <laughs> Well, I basically grew up in here. I mean, my parents, my family home was across the road, but my grandparents were back here. My parents were always working, so I was always underfoot. So they would kind of, I was like under the supervision of my grandparents. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather kind of cornered me to get me out of my parents' hair and ta started teaching me how to weave. And I think I was seven or eight. But for Christmas, he gave me a little table loom and got me started and gave me 30 cents when I got something off the loom, so. Huh. And I thought I'd done well. In Ortega's workshop, he uses an old European-style two-harness loom for weaving. And it's an intensive process. How long does it take to weave, say, a rug? It depends on the pattern you use. If you use just a straight weave where you can use the shuttle, just a straight pass back and forth, you can weave an inch a minute and get something that's 60 inches in an hour. Wow. But it, when you get into design work, which is literally laid in, that's where you get into more time. So this knowledge of the weaving was brought to this area from Spain when this area was settled in the 1700s. This is a full body workout. Yeah. <laughs> the process has a sort of rhythm to it that the Ortega family has come to love. I had an uncle that used to use that loom, and he, he was a school teacher. So he'd come home at 3.30 every day and he'd get on the loom for an hour, and he said that was his therapy to forget the kids. <laughs> a therapy that's been handed down through multiple generations in Chimayo. Discover more adventures in and around Santa Fe, New Mexico, including an interview with George R.R. R. Martin of Game of Thrones, about his new Western adventure train that you can ride. And search and subscribe to the Travels to Darley podcast on iHeart or wherever you listen to podcasts for more immersive adventures.